So today, it's still a bit wet after yesterday's rain, but I'm going to be looking for crane flies. Now crane flies can usually be defined as species belonging to the superfamily Tipuloidae, which in the UK and globally consists of four families, the Cylindrotomidae, Pneumoniidae, Tipulidae, and Pediciidae. Occasionally a couple of other families as well are included within this group of crane flies, so the Trichoceridae, or the winter gnats, and the Tichotridae, the phantom crane flies. Now if I can find any today, I'm sure I will be able to. I'm going to go through how to identify these families, as well as a few examples now to get to a species level identification. As far as identification material is concerned, there are keys to all British species of crane flies available in the literature section of the Catalogue of the Crane Flies of the World, the details of which I'll put in the video description below. These are the ones I'll be referring to today. Firstly, I'll go through how to achieve a family level identification for your crane fly. The keys to crane flies rely heavily on wing venation. This can often be seen well enough to achieve at least a family level ID in a good field photo, however in some cases, particularly with a smaller species, you may have to look at the wing backlit under a microscope or hand lens. The first feature you need to examine is the anal veins of the wing. In the four families comprising the Tipuloidae, or the true crane flies, two anal veins are present. As you can see in the top left here, there's one that runs like that, and one that runs like that. However, in Tichotridae, or phantom crane flies, both of which is in the bottom left, there's only one anal vein that runs like this. But they can be distinguished from other flies, um, which may look similar, by having two, two veins that are forked in the distal half of the wing. One at the top here like that, and another that forks like that. There are actually other similar flies that do have these forked veins, such as mosquitoes, however they all have a simple unforked vein that runs between the middle of them there. And it isn't just the true tipuloid crane flies which have two anal veins, but the trichoceras or winter gnats do as well. However, winter gnats have three ocelli or simple eyes on the top of the head which are lacking in true crane flies, which if you look in the bottom right is sort of arranged like that in a triangle. If you've ascertained that your fly is a tipuloid, you must then look at the mouth parts. In the family Tipulidae, a common family of large crane flies, the palps are long and project far in front of the head, like this. However, if you have one of the other three families, then these palps are short and so don't really extend um, further than the length of the head. The next family to key out is the Cylindrotomidae. In this family, a wing vein called R1 will not end in the costa. Um, but rather it was sort of curved down into a vein called R2 plus 3. If you look at the top right here, I'll highlight vein R1, which runs like this. And as you can see in this, this specimen, it does end in a costa, which is the vein that runs along the margin of the wing. However, if it was in cylindrotomidae, it would curve down into this vein. Now, again in this wing, this, this vein is R2 plus 3, and it forks into two veins here. The top one is R2, and the bottom one is R3 with this vein here being R2 plus 3. In Cylindrotomidae, this vein won't fork, so along its entire length it will be called R2 plus 3. So the two families left to separate are the Pediciidae and the Lemoniidae. The Pediciidae are also known as the hairy-eyed crane flies, and will invariably have hairs arising from the surface of the eye, which can just be about seen with a 20 times hand lens. In Lemoniidae crane flies, the eyes are bare. Now the keys for the species in the family Lemoniidae are split into two subfamilies, the Lemoninae and the Limnophilinae. It is therefore useful to work out which subfamily a crane fly belongs to, if it is a Lemoniid. The first feature to check is vein R2 plus 3, as I've sort of annotated in the top right. If this isn't forked into veins R2 plus 3, as you can see here, then you should go to a key for Lemoninae. However, if it is, then check for tibial spurs. You can see in this photo here, this, this crane fly has a tibial spur, it'll, it'll usually have two, one on the other side of the leg, um, coming sort of off the apex of the tibia, which is the second long segment if you're coming from the thorax. However, occasionally these tibial spurs, if they are present in the species, can be knocked off, so if you're unsure, check a feature known as a discal cell in the wing. This is a closed cell up here, and um, some, some crane flies will have this, but some won't. Um, in those crane flies, it will be called an open discal cell, and there won't be these cross veins here, sort of delimiting, delimiting it at the, disc, at the distal end. So there are two keys here that you can use if you're unsure. There's a key to uh, crane flies with an open discal cell, and ones with a closed discal cell. This crane fly here I found in my garden this morning, and I identified it as belonging to the family Tipulidae, the long pouch crane flies, on account of the two anal veins, lack of a kelly, and elongate mouth parts. Using a key to genera available in the catalogue of the crane flies of the world, I was able to identify it as a nephotoma. This is because the wing has a closed discal cell here. 
Each internal segment has a wall of hairs at the base, which you can see on these internal segments here, and the thorax is yellow on top with strong black stripes. If you're interested in crane flies, you'll soon learn to recognise this common genus, also known as the tiger crane flies, due to their large size and striking black and yellow markings. My next task is to identify the species. When looking at the key for species, the first feature I must check is a stigma. This is a patch near the anterior part of the wing, in the distal half, here. You can see the stigma is dark as opposed to pale, which rules out four Necrotoma species. The next character I must look at is the nature of the abdominal pattern. Is the abdomen banded with black, or does it have a dark medium stripe? If it were to have a dark medium stripe, there would be no band of yellow at the anterior margin of the abdominal guides here, which means that my specimen must be N. flavipalpus or N. crocata, because my crane fly has yellow and black bands instead. Now to separate these species, it is easiest to look at the top of the head. Nephrotoma flavipalpus is only a tiny patch of black, with most of the head being yellow, however N. crocata has most of the top of the head darkly pigmented. Looking at the top of the head here, this means that my specimen is Nephrotoma flavipalpus. This crane fly, I determined, belongs to the Lemoniid subfamily Limnophilinae due to the short mouth parts, wing venation, and the presence of tibial spurs. As with the other crane flies, I can use the key to this subfamily available on the catalogue of crane flies of the world. The wing venation is again where I must first look. In the genera Idioptera and Iliophyla, the lower basal cell is divided in the middle here by an extra cross vein, but obviously in my specimen there's just one cross vein around here like that, which rules out those two genera. I must then look at the vein R1. This continues straight into the costa here, rather than turning up like that at, at where it meets this cross vein R there. Now the membrane of the wing at the apex also lacks hairs, with hairs confined to the wing veins, which rules out paradelphomia. Now briefly moving away from the wings, I must then look at the shape of the head. Is it elongate behind the eyes, or is it normal and shortly rounded posteriorly? In my specimen, it's not elongate, with the sides not straight, and it's not concave, but rather shortly rounded and, and convex, slightly convex. This rules out limnophila and pseudolimnophila. I now need to return to the wings and look at the part right at the very base, known as squama, just about here. In the genus Pilaria, uh, the squama has long, dark bristles. These are easily lost, but in the bottom right here, you can see that there's one dark, long bristle on the squamma. That means that my specimen is Pilaria. Now the identification of Pilaria relies somewhat on the coloration of the pleury. The pleury are the panel-like sides of the thorax. In my specimen the pleury lack a distinct pattern of stripes or spots, so they cannot be P. meridiana or P. scutellata. The next couplet asks me whether the thorax is entirely shining orange or blackish. While the top of the thorax looks orangish from a first glance, as you can see when I rub away the cream flies dusting here, it reveals a blackish ground colour, and as the top of the thorax is also not bicoloured, but more convex rather than flattish on top, as you can see, my specimen must be Pilaria decolour. Now, the crane flies are a species group, and can be a challenge when starting out. However, every record is so valuable, and the crane fly recording scheme would be more than happy to receive any records, which can be submitted via iRecords.